Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Let me know if you hear this good, because like trying different things with the microphone. The microphone's right here on the table instead of using the arm thing that fell over last week. <laughs> uh, anyways, welcome to donkeyjawprojects.com. No, welcome, welcome to Marsh Makes Comics YouTube channel um, of donkeyjawprojects.com, which I need to do some work on. Um, but anyways, that's a whole other story. Today, we're going to be talking about leveling up by slowing down with your comics. And um, it's going to be rad-tastic because I don't even know. I, I This is going to be one of those days where we just hang out. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully some good stuff comes. Sometimes that's the best episodes, actually. The best things come <laughs> to those who are unprepared. <laughs> what is up, bitey things? Bitey thing. What's up? Yeah, sounds great. Good. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for confirming. Um. So I'm trying to do something right now. Let's see. That's not... I want to... Don't want to do it that way. Why do I have to? Why does everything have to be so difficult? <laughs> uh, let's see. I got to do stuff. So um, things have been kind of happening. And we've been having some fun trying to figure out some different situations to kind of connect with people and everything. Um so we're going to get into that a little bit too. I don't have really anything to show off. Maybe I could show off like some old sketchbooks or something. I don't know. I didn't really like, I usually I, I come up with like questions and stuff and, and um, I don't know, just to topic points. And I do have a topic, but um, it's, uh, I, I just didn't have time, you know, to, to get to that this time for some reason. But that's all right. Let's see. I am just trying to set something up so I can share it with you guys. It's hard to multitask. I don't even know if I did this right. Probably not. Ooh, it worked. Okay. I'm not horrible. I'm just mostly horrible. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's a weird thing to say. Um... Hmm. Now I got to find the thing. Oh, here we go. Invite friends. All right. There we go. All right. All right. So now I got a link for you guys. So you guys have possibly, probably heard about my old Discord. Um, and I, I'm going to get to the chat again in a, in a minute um, as people filter in. Uh, but uh, yeah, you probably have heard of the old Discord, AAA Discord um, that I used to have. Uh, no longer do I have it, but the same kind of group basically uh, is still around, and they 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 changed the name of the Discord to um, the uh, Adventures in Comic Making Discord, which it's still very awesome place. Uh, you know, it kind of thinned out after like I kind of stopped being super involved and stuff, but um, that was mostly due to life circumstances. AKA, you know, the big, the big reason why I kind of, uh, wasn't doing comic videos for a couple of years and, and all that. Um, and you, you, you can find that there's, there's a video where it talks about like stuff like that. So I, I've talked about it in the past. I don't really feel like getting into it today, but, um, it's no secret or anything just so anyways, um, so now we've decided to kind of freshen things up a bit, get things rolling again a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's technically not my discord or anything. Um, but it is, you know, I am part of like the, the team that kind of works on it and stuff. And so now we're not doing discord anymore. We're doing, um, a gilded server. So I'm going to put a link. I'll put it in the chat too, actually. If you guys are interested in connecting, um, please feel free to. We're gonna we're doing like 
you know, relatively daily, like just chat prompts and stuff. Um, and you know, it's all, it's all about making comics there. That's all we're all about. We're not trying to get into any kind of, um, political anythings or religious anythings or anything that would you know cause any controversy we just we like to make comics and we like to share about it and it's not just about comics it's about art and writing and you know it, it, but somewhere around all those creative pursuits um so you know you don't have to join but feel free to join if if you're interested in connecting with some cool people who you can walk alongside with and make some comics or other art and, you know, I don't know, enjoy a nice place to hang out. I, I think it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, and it's inspiring. And, you know, people like Peter Seckler and um, Shell Presto, DiBaggio, and, you know, there's, there's a bunch of people there that are really cool um, that I really enjoy hanging out with. Um, some of the people who watch this channel are there from time to time. Uh, so, you know, check it out if you're into um, kind of connecting with some people and having some people you can kind of bounce, uh, bounce like your ideas off of or not even bounce your ideas, just whatever. Like just it's it's good to have like a almost like a support system or something, I guess, you know. Um, so I don't know. It's been good for me and, and a lot of comics have come out of it with the nine volt anthology and stuff. I think there there's like seven anthologies or something at this point. Um, and people who have been in the, in the, uh, server have benefited by being able to be published and, you know, it, you don't really make any money. It's nobody's making any money on it or anything. Um, but it's, it's a cool, I mean, I've put my comics in it and, uh, I've been happy to be involved in some of the, um the the nine volt anthology so there's the link in the um <clears throat> in the uh chat but i'm also gonna put it in the description here uh let's see i gotta oh i think i did change it okay cool um and i guess there's another piece of news i can share too it's not like very big news but <laughs> um let's see Join the, um, what are we calling it again? Oh, yeah, adventures and and comic making in comic making community. Control, there you go. Cool. So now in the description, the link is also in the description. So anybody watching on the replay or anybody who's missed it um, in the chat, feel free to hit that up if you're interested in it. It's no, there's no, you don't have to, you know, it's just, it's just a fun community. There's no like uh, tricks here <laughs> or anything. So um, yeah. All right. So let's see, I guess, Another little kind of advertising-y type of update thing. I'll just I'm just gonna mention it. I do have an Etsy now, um, and it currently has three items on it. Two are abstract paintings I did recently. I just wanted something up there that I could just throw some art up on if I feel like selling something I happen to make, or um, you know. Whenever I ha do have comics to sell, I can throw it up on there. That's how like Gary does his Gary, Gary um, Hodges. You know, that's how I got his uh, dinosaurs versus Mars bot comic. And you know, I think um, Frank has his stuff up there. A lot of a lot of people use Etsy sometimes, and I've used other places like um, Store Envy, but I I, I don't want to really use Store Envy because I just it's just a little bit clunky of a website and I, I don't really love having my stuff up on that place so and i've used like ebay and stuff and it's not like i have a lot to sell right now or anything but you know just so you know there is a new store up there so feel free to check that out if you like i actually got a sale i didn't even this is the first time i'm mentioning it and i did get one sale so that was kind of cool um so yeah 
Um, let's see. So yeah, let's see what else we got here. We got RSC Arts, Ralph Contreras. I probably say that horribly. Hi, Marsh. Hey, how you doing, man? Thanks for coming by. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Joshua Kimball. Hiya, Marsh. Working whilst listening. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. We're not going to get into any spicy topics today, I don't think. I don't think, Josh. <laughs> but it was fun hanging out, listening to you with your spicy topics uh, the other day. Um, very, very interesting. And I was... Uh, doing yard work. It's funny. I was on, I was on Didi's show or I was not on Didi's show. I was chatting with Didi, uh, last week, I think it was. And, um, you know, through just li watching her sh or listening to her show while I was working and I was, um, chopping wood. So right across the street from me, you know, it was a bunch of woods and stuff. There's a park nearby and things like that. But you know, the street, people come and chop down trees so they don't like hit the wires and stuff from time to time. And last week they chopped down some trees and today they chopped down some trees right across the street from me. So I'm like, well, um, I'm going to get some of that because <laughs> I have like, you know, we have like a wood splitter and we have like a fireplace and it's good to have free wood. What the heck? Why not? And, and there's like a little bit of, um, kind of woods there's like two acres here on on this property so once in a while a tree will fall or something and we'll be able to get that wood so we get a lot of free wood um so that's that's nice and today it happened again they were chopping down trees and and man like i couldn't get there quick enough other people are getting getting the wood like as i speak i think there's somebody across the street getting wood and right before this show i ran across there i'm like i, I gotta get at least partially in the game with this one <laughs> <laughs> so I went and grabbed some wood real quick and uh, I got like a, a good like, I don't know, a good like maybe 20 pieces of nice wood or whatever. And then I'll we'll chop it up and it'll be ready for uh, whenever we need it. <laughs> but you got to like you got to get while the getting's good, right? <laughs> um, Evening Marsh, always good to see you stream. Yes, yes. Thank you for coming by, Didi. Um, if you guys don't know. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., unless unless something's different this week than more normal weeks, Dee Dee will have her live stream that she does in the mornings from 8 to usually around noonish. Um, she also does them on Monday from 8 till noonish. Check out her show. Uh, I, a lot of times when I go in there, I see a lot of my friends from here, there, and that's really cool. Um, and of course, Dee Dee's always supporting us comic weirdos over here too. So that's that it's cool that you know we we got that that fun art community on YouTube. I I love it, man. I, I just never I never get enough of it. That's a big part of why I keep doing YouTube is just because all of you fine folks are awesome and fun to hang around with. So yeah uh ralph says that sounds cool i joined the original discord back in the day haven't been there in a while oh yeah well we're we're kind of freshening things up trying to get things moving again um so um i don't know it's just i really enjoy having that community and i've been like i'm like back in the comics groove for sure and and it's just like i i don't want to i don't know i like i like chatting with people and and getting into it and um you know, I, I love like the the anthologies and stuff that we get into, and it's just to see people actually making stuff is pretty awesome. Because a lot of people talk the talk but don't walk the walk. Um, luckily, many people in in our community here on YouTube and stuff they actually do make stuff. You know, but there's plenty of people I've witnessed who talk a lot about making comics but never actually get to it. And I get it. It's hard. It's it takes me a while to get to a comic project sometimes. In fact, you know, that's kind of the rut I'm in these days. Um, it's been a year since I made uh, it's been about a year since I made my last comic. And that comic was one I did with Didi. <laughs> that little uh, get your sit your butt in the chair and <laughs> make comics, <laughs> you know, ironically enough. So I, I get it when people don't get to their project. But man, I mean, when it comes down to it, I was writing comics since then and stuff. I just haven't gotten 
anything like pr- produced since since that time you know and right before that i did a little comic for the anthology and stuff and it, it's and then before that i had a long time of like somewhere around two years since or so since i made a comic but that was due to my crazy life circumstances um <laughs> so you know a lot of excuses i have here don't i <laughs> as i say in in the order that that yoda might say it a lot of excuses have you (laughs) i have i'm not good at the impressions uh but um you know the the time for those excuses has to stop one of these days as as uh frank salazar would say um make comics not excuses right and and i love that quote (laughs) i love that he said that because that is like that's what i used to live by (laughs) and i want to get back to living by that um so uh let's see daniel goodwin how you doing thanks for coming by you're kicking butt with those comics man especially those updates every day there's something interesting from you with with some cool art and stuff it's really cool uh let's see yes so join the community if you'd like to be down it'll be fun we'll have some fun love well just fun (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh let's see would you say we should check it before we wreck it i would absolutely say that sir good point <laughs> uh check yourself before you riggedy wreck yourself <laughs> as as i say it in my the the most white voice i could say it <laughs> uh yes I, well you know i was i was kind of a, one of those white boy hip-hop want to be hip-hop dudes and and kind of still am i guess in some ways <laughs> so what can i say but that's how the things go afternoon everyone what's up gary hodges how you doing man thanks for coming by <laughs> gary <laughs> it's like he's he fell that like he fell down <laughs> like a a a canyon or something and he's yelling (laughs) gary's name gary (laughs) echo echo (laughs) i don't know i'm just being goofy so um let's see what do we what else do we have here philip chandler what's up hello all lots of familiar faces here yes yes thanks for coming by do 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 Josh says, I managed a spiceless stream earlier today. Awesome. (laughs) I mean, you got to put some spice in it once in a while. You got to like, you know, I mean, food, food without spices is kind of bland. Unless you're having like a steak, I can go with that, you know, but, (laughs) but I actually put spices on my steak because I like it. I like it. I put lots of stuff on lots of stuff. We shall see if the spice can abide for a bit. Hey, well, you know, if that's what you like to do, man, do it enjoy be yourself you know so let's see careful josh you hold the spice back too long and it can erupt in the unpredictable ways <laughs> i know and you know we got to be careful too about those lamps like luckily i don't have any lamps in view here on this this video because otherwise joshua might be you know kind of triggered or something and and we'd have a problem so <laughs> go go to joshua kimball's youtube videos for for more on uh his vengeance against the lamps um (laughs) oh goodness let's see you might find yourself debating the cashier at target or the mailman oh 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 wow yes yes you wouldn't want to do that (laughs) dd says how are the chickens marsh the chickens that that's a good i'm glad you asked dd because uh you know there is a little bit to say about the chickens by the way before i get into the chickens um what should I, you guys want to see like maybe some sketchbook stuff maybe i'll show off some sketchbook stuff and then i'll draw a little bit and kind of try to talk about a topic if you guys have any questions feel free to hit me up because i am just like i said earlier slightly not the most prepared as i i would be on a normal day so um i'm gonna go i'm gonna go look through my my bookcase which is actually um my it's actually organized for once so i have access to sketchbooks um let me see if i can find something interesting for people to look at while i'm chatting ah let's see what do we have here (laughs) 
<laughs> Maybe I'll just grab a bunch of them and hopefully one of them's halfway decent. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see. We got these. We got these. We got these. Now my bookcase is going to be a mess. What else we got? Oh boy. I don't even know which ones have actual sketches in them. There's so many, I don't know about you guys, but there's so many like sketchbooks that are like not finished. <laughs> I need to like, just I, like every time I want to buy a sketchbook, I'm like, I have a huge stack of them here. <laughs> At least half of this stack is probably unfinished paper pieces of paper. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of inspired by Peter Seckler. He's been doing some really cool um, videos. Uh, he does like a video almost every day showing his, just showing him drawing comics. Sometimes he'll, he'll like venture off and do one about painting or he'll do one about, you know, where he's uh, showing off a sketchbook tour or something. And that actually got me wanting to show off some sketches and stuff. I mean, you guys have seen a lot of this stuff. I've shown a lot of this stuff before, but Eh, might as well fit, flip through a little bit because I don't have much to show today, really. Um, except for me drawing in my own sketchbook, which I think I'll do. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, the chickens. The ch chickens. The ch 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 chickity chickens. Um, so, uh, I don't know if I told everybody this, but one of the, um, one of the chickens got caught by a weasel. Um... So unfortunately one passed away. We had, we have, we had a total of seven chickens. One's a rooster. So uh, six hens, one rooster and one, one bit the dust, unfortunately last week or the week before. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we, we did what we had to do and uh, we didn't eat it. Don't, don't worry. Like I don't, I don't want to eat my chickens. Sorry. <laughs> I'll eat their eggs, but I'm not going to eat the chickens. Um, I'm just not, you know, I, I have a little bit of a farm life, but it's, it's more of a semi farm kind of life. I like to say, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> uh, so we ended up, um, we ended up buying more chickens. <laughs> we got more chickens. So now we have a total of 11 chickens, which would be one rooster and 10 hens. <laughs> That's we're not going to go further, you know, bigger than that. But, uh, you know, apparently the Internet has told us that six hens are not enough for one rooster, which I could kind of understand. He he uh, he's a, he likes to uh, have some fun. So, um <laughs> You know he's he's doing his thing and and he he needs he needs more more hands in his life I guess so uh, <laughs> apparently that's that's how it works um, so we and we're like well we can fit more chickens or we can fit more hens uh, so we did we got some more hens so now we have a total of ten hens so we're gonna get like we we could have close to a dozen eggs every day not a dozen we, we'll get like nine or 10, maybe eight, you know, something like that. But that's, we were already flooded with eggs just with the six, you know, cause they were all laying, you know? So, um, but I do eat eggs almost every day anyways, um, for my kind of lunch. So, uh, you know, and it's good nutrition. It's really good when, when you have them like, cause the, the eggs, I found out the eggs you buy in the store are, um, they're usually, they could be anywhere from like 60 to 90 days old. Um, and every single day that, that the egg is, uh, ha, you know, goes without being eaten, it loses just a little bit more nutritional value, a little bit more. And there's a lot of nutrition in, in eggs. Um, so, you know, we're getting like heavy doses of nutrition because we're eating them like the day after or two days after, you know. Um, and we share the eggs with, you know, our neighbors and stuff, things like that. So it's not like we're eating every single egg that comes out, but yeah, it's, it's cool. It's cool beans. Well, cool eggs. Actually, they're kind of warm when they come out, but Hey, that's another story. Uh, let's see. 
You got to do a comic about a fist fight for wood once a tree is chopped down. I know. I that, like, I was talking to the guy who was like getting the the, the stumps because he he filled up his truck and he drove away. And so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get my my my. Uh, we have like a little, you know. Um, I think it's it's a it's a Rav four. We have a Rav four. So, um, you know, I was like, I, I could get some wood in there. I can't like go crazy because it's probably gonna break break or something, but. Let me just bring that across the street because they were big pieces. I didn't want to try to lug them myself, you know, just with a little. I would have messed with the wheelbarrow if I was going to be able to do it yet uh, tomorrow. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm trying to get them before while the getting's good. So, <laughs> so the guy left. Um, I went, drove across there, started putting wood in, and then I see him drive by. He must have went to turn around, and he's like laughing. <laughs> as he goes by sort of not like in a, a jerk way he was just like I, I just like letting me know he was there i guess so he did that and then i uh you know i was filling the, the um the car with the wood and all that and then lo and behold like 10 minutes later he comes back with an empty truck <laughs> and i'm like oh my gosh this guy's really really uh trying to get it and uh, he was nice, though. He's like, oh, man, I'm not trying to, you know, be a jerk or anything, but I'm just trying to get it while the getting's good or whatever. And um, he's like, I live right down the street. You know, he told me his address and everything. So he wasn't trying to be like a jerk or whatnot. But I was like, man, good for you, man, getting it. Because I was going to wait till like next, like till tomorrow, because it just like thunderstormed. And I had the stream to do. So I'm like, well. Maybe I could go and get a few before the stream starts, you know, but then like <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get all of it, but at least I'll get something and hopefully nobody will come until tomorrow morning and tomorrow morning I could do it or even after the stream and I'll, I'll do it. But I doubt there'll be much left after the stream. This guy's going crazy on this wood. <laughs> so I filled up the RAV4 the best I could without popping the tires and, you know, and it's literally like right across the street from me. So it's not like far. It's just I didn't feel like doing trying to do it with the wheelbarrow. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't know. Um, so then I, I left and I was like, yeah, man, have at it. I, I just wanted to get in the game a little bit. You know, it's right across the street from me. It'd be a shame if I didn't get some, you know. <laughs> so I was happy to get a little something. Um so yeah, that's that's my wood story. <laughs> we didn't get in a fist fight. Uh, let's see. The spice must flow freely, but in a tempered fashion. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Fun, fun for sure. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> I was looking for lamps, and I'm glad I didn't have to take any out for you, Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah you're like the you're like the uh i don't know what's the most well-known like guitar smasher <laughs> you're like the 80s hairband of lamps <laughs> is it or is it like who i don't know who's like who's the biggest culprits for smashing guitars but uh yeah <laughs> oh boy what comic will you be working on when you take one on? I got a couple in the works now, to be honest. I haven't really, uh, <laughs> I haven't really um, announced it, but we could talk a little bit about it today. We'll see. We'll see. Um, <laughs> hashtag can't eat my pets. Yes, exactly. I can eat their eggs though, but I can't eat my pets. <laughs> yes, not not. My pets, you know, from what I hear, cats cats don't feel the same way about humans. But, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, let's see. Fresh eggs are a flavor that is really hard to describe to one who has never had one. You know, I've had fresh eggs. I think it really depends. I've had fresh eggs um, before I had these chickens. And I remember them tasting a little gamey or something. And I didn't like it. So I was kind of nervous when, when uh magda said she wanted to get chickens and stuff and i'm like i don't is there are they gonna go to waste because i don't know if i'm gonna like gamey you know eggs and to me they taste exactly the same as the other eggs or may, maybe they're a little better i don't know but i i also put salt salt in uh 
Well, first of all, I make bacon first um, almost every day. And then I cook the eggs and the bacon grease. So, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of those flavors. I throw some salt and pepper. You guys probably think I'm going to die of a heart attack. But I think from what I hear, that's actually healthier than people realize. But anyways, I don't want to get into food wars. We get That's the spi- spice. We could get into some spiciness. We talk about nutrition. Oh, boy. <laughs> there are some dividing issues among nutritionists and dietitians and (laughs) that's for sure oh boy anyways we don't want to get into that (laughs) so i yeah i i I cook it in like the bacon grease and it is so tasty and i like it every morning it's not really morning it's um I, i don't eat until like 12 i i get up and i go on a walk and i get my 10,000 steps in which takes a while and then I come home, work on coding, work on school and all that. And then around 12 o'clock, I, I wait to eat till around 12. Sometimes it's one or two before I finally eat. But, you know, trying to do that, like intermittent fasting, a little exercise, stuff like that, trying to be healthy. And uh, I'm into protein and having less carbs. I feel like that's pretty healthy from, you know, from all the nutrition advice I've seen one of the biggest things they say is stick with whole foods and stay away from carbs, especially complex carbs, basically anything in the middle of the the aisles in the grocery store. So I kind of go loosely with that. I'm not like strict on any diet, but you know, I kind of do that the best I can. I do have my ice cream and other stuff once in a while too. And probably have too much of that. Oh, there goes another load of uh, (laughs) wood. I just saw him (laughs) drive by. (laughs) So yeah. Anyway, such a clear difference from store-bought. And like I said, I did try other eggs before that were like fresh and they did have a different flavor. So, you know, I guess it's just different. Like it depends on what breed of chicken, I think too, you know? Um, And I don't know what breed mine are i forget what it was in fact the new chickens are a different breed but they look exactly the same they're like the orange chickens or whatever i don't know they have like orange feathers and they're just all orange with like you know the little red thingies and i don't know i should know this stuff if i'm a chicken farmer (laughs) but i don't but uh you know they they taste normal to me maybe these new chickens will have a different tasting um egg uh I know this is riveting uh, comic comic talk here. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Gary agrees. Fresh eggs are definitely a world apart. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see with the new chickens what happens. Fresh anything is. I knew a girl who grew up on a cattle ranch, and she said fresh beef is all different as is as different as fresh seafood. Okay. Well, hey. All I know is there's supposedly a lot more nutrition, you know, and that's that's what I'm happy about, especially. What's up, Devante? How you doing? Thanks for coming by. The orange chickens would be a rad indie band name. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, you know, and so, <clears throat> oh, what else about the chickens? The rooster is a handful. He attacks us every day, you know, in different ways. Um, so that's fun. We have to put him in his place constantly because he always thinks we're like taking over the the roost or something. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm the one at the top of the pecking order. You better chill out. <laughs> but uh, he doesn't he doesn't cease to keep trying to kind of attack us. <laughs> uh, fortunately, we're bigger than him, so he's there's not a lot he can do. I mean, they have sharp claws and stuff. Like I got. I got caught by one the other day, Um, but it's not the worst thing in the world. (laughs) Uh, My wings are bigger than his. (laughs) So I've been meaning to like do this real quick. All right, we're going to do that. Let's see what else we got here. So let's get into some sketchery, I guess. I got to kind of take a look because like this sketchbook, you guys have seen stuff in there. This sketchbook, this is an old one. It's also got some other people's drawings in it, I think. Which I don't want to share other people's drawings. They might be embarrassed. It's actually mostly not even my drawings. This one I've shared 
and there's not much in it. Okay. <laughs> I told you there's like this one. I think again. Okay. That's another one with not much in it. Oh, there's a cool piece. I, I've actually drew some of these on streams. <laughs> I guess I can share a couple of little things. Um, let's see. The little di they're little dinosaurs, <laughs> kinda yeah, in a funny way. They're they're a little bit like little dinosaurs. <laughs> um, they'll destroy anything. Yeah, you know that's one thing is like we never feel bad about like wasting food because we'll just give it to the chickens. They'll eat it. And yes, they are little monsters, but they're cute. <laughs> hey, Dan, aka Sideburns, what's up, dude? Thanks for coming by. Sideburns likes to hang out in the uh, the Gilded server as well, so definitely check that out if you guys want to uh, have a little fun community hanging out. We're get like I said, we're getting it back into gear, so it's it's kind of revving up its in engines, and we're getting things flowing again. What's up, Mister Vic? Hello from Mexico. How you doing? Good to see you here. All right, so yeah, some of this stuff. Man, I draw stuff sometimes. It's like in, uh, like, I don't even know what this is. It looks like a wizard shooting a gun. Oh, yeah. It even says machine gun wizard. I think I got that from somebody. Somebody like said that. And I was like, I got to draw a machine gun wizard. <laughs> uh, I don't know. This is like probably me trying to develop a machine gun wizard. That's kind of a cool little design there. Sometimes the only thing is like, do you guys ever do this where like you're sketching? I don't know about like you guys, but I'll, I'll just copy stuff from the internet sometimes. Um, like from Instagram, like other artists stuff just for practice. You know, it's not, there's no, like, I'm not trying to say it's mine or anything. But the problem is if I go back in my sketchbook and I see it, usually I'll write like copied from whatever. So I think I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm almost, I pretty much always write, like I copied this, even from, if it's from like a comic book or whatever, I co copy from Jack Kirby or whatever, so that I at least know, and other people, if they're looking through, they know that like, oh, this isn't an original thing. But sometimes I look back and I'm like, can I say this is mine or not? Because I don't really remember if I copied it, but I do like this like little design. I might have to play with that design. That's kind of cool. Like a bird looking wizard thing and then also there could be like fan art of stuff that you don't really like follow or, or like know a ton about or i don't know sometimes i just like to copy stuff from instagram but this is like um G gibbons i don't know how to say his name <laughs> josh was talking about that the other day i don't know how to say his name but doomed barbarian gibbon i made this uh i don't know what does it say 2020 so there you go a little doomed barbarian gibbon fan art piece so yeah and then another fan art piece which i think i might have did this on stream or something um for russ leach for uh ah, what is it called again i have the comic nearby somewhere um something the dead uh saved by the dead or only death can save us <laughs> and i have the set i have like four copies of the second issue and i haven't read it yet i read the first one the first one i, I really like the first one um but yeah oh this was meant to be like some concept for um whoops <laughs> i hit the um microphone there but uh for uh calamity jane which was a comic i was trying to work on for a while and this was just one of the many concepts I tried to draw for the people plorter, <laughs> which is a device that teleports people. Um, <laughs> and it's not a very, that wasn't a very good design and that comic never happened, but who knows, maybe one day I'll make it happen again. I got a really cool um, designed logo that I, I um, paid uh, my buddy to do. And why can't I, th I can't think of anybody's name today right now he'll probably come i wouldn't be saying here he is actually mutt man <laughs> speak of the mutt man <laughs> why can't i think of people's names like i know who mutt man is like 
<laughs> Jason is awesome. Like, yeah. And I paid for a logo from him and I never used it because I never made the comic because I'm a dummy. And these are um, design concepts for um, uh, my own comics that I can't. This was the one I was doing with Peter um, Palmiati. <laughs> I, I should not try to come up with words today because it's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> uh, the what was it called? Wrath, Big Wrath. Which I still kind of like that comic. I wrote the script and everything. I should like make it right. Um, but the thing is, is I haven't even talked to Peter Palmiotti that much lately, and I feel like I don't know. But anyways, this guy's name is Graft. I did a lot of um concept art for it, and was starting to even draw the comics. This is just playing around with uh, paint markers, just trying them out. I don't know what else do I have here. Anything good? paint marker swatches i got just like words like probably writing ideas and i don't know if there's much more in the sketchbook that's worth looking at um little weird character i drew maybe again on a stream i don't even know uh looks like kind of a weird version of like a star wars type of creature and i drew this is where we put the wood <laughs> for the fire we have a stove and it looks like this and there's this funny like dragon kettle thing on on the top and so the, yeah that's where we put the wood <laughs> i drew it uh i don't know what this stuff is i think this i was copying from people sort of so Oh, yeah. This is actually going to be published as a cover for a friend's zine eventually. Um, so that's going to be cool. I'll let you guys know about that. But this I just kind of drew on a whim. I wanted to do some crazy punk rock trippy thing, and this is what happened. <laughs> so uh, just observational drawing. Oh, this I think was a picture from um, Pinterest. David Chelsea, I think, yeah, so I must have been copying the artist or maybe, yeah, so I kind of remember drawing that. Some turtles, drawing some turtles. Pretty cool, right? Let me know if you guys have any questions. We're going to, we will get into a topic. If there's anything you might want me to draw, maybe I can try to draw something that you request. Um, but we'll get into it shortly with the drawing. So there was some stuff. This is an old sketchbook, I think, but I might have probably showed you guys stuff from here. Oh, I have showed this recently, but this is a good oldie but goodie. Let me um take out the stuff from underneath it. That way you can see more of it. <clears throat> this one's got a lot of cool like concept designs for comics I was supposed to make but never finished. So, you know... I think I've always tried to bite off more than I can chew. And here's some writing for uh, Armor Girl. So, and also some, I was trying to do like, thinking of like mixing like Dr. Seuss with the old, like um, kind of the old, uh, like Fleischer Studios style animation cartooning, you know, style. That's what part of the art idea was. And I even started to like draw some of the comic. This was like some kind of like thumbnails type of thing. Creating some like weird space vehicles. If Adam's here, he, he's seen all this stuff. And you guys might have seen all this stuff too. Because I did share it in a video sometime last year. You know, this was one of the warriors on the other side. And it was supposed to be like. I was going to take the the Butter Battle book, which is one of my favorite um, Dr. Seuss books, and kind of mix that with my story that I was doing with Armor Girl. So there was going to be two sides fighting each other in this like war, and this was the other side. And the, and the side that Armor Girl is on is more like technology and human humanoid type of characters, whereas this one's more like beast type of characters so and yeah again trying to trying to do it like cool but also in in that style of like fleischer studios a little bit so um you know 
I had a lot of fun trying to draw in that style. I should like keep keep going with that. But yeah, me kind of working out some ideas for possible storyline. I never fully writ wrote this one. Um, yeah, I guess I was working on this stuff around 2018. Um, so this is uh, Puma Man. There's an old, weird, old movie called Puma Man. I think it's like an Italian movie, and it's like kind of like a superhero, and he kind of flies like just standing straight up almost. So this was me like doing a Fleischer Studios style version of this weird character, <laughs> Puma Man. So shark knife i still love that and i i'm i t ended up turning that into a fully colored piece uh so that was kind of cool uh this is one of those drawings that i actually really like it's kind of got that hip-hop vibe to it but uh that's um cory lewis's shark knife which apparently he's gonna be doing more of soon um i think so that's cool uh parasite is a cool manga comic you humans really have no clue what life is like beyond your little planet, do you? I don't know. That's like a, not that great drawing, but who cares? A <laughs> uh, little Popeye action there. And this is, um, I'm pretty sure this is like, uh, well, it might be. I feel like this is Jack, one of Jack Kirby's characters but me trying to do my own style of it, but it could also be like a public domain character. I don't know what it is. Uh, more designs for, uh, for armor girl. This was one of the, these were like some of the characters I was creating. This is just like me drawing a really bad, uh, Alita battle angel, but, um, yeah, some more designs here. Oh, Mike Emirates. <laughs> I drew a picture of Mike Emirates with Space Cat in his head. <laughs> that was just a weird, weird thing <laughs> that I did. Uh, more stuff from Armor Girl. Let's see. Yep, more. I was trying to design like the like what the cities and towns would look like. Again, trying to play around with that uh, kind of um what's his name i can't think of things today um <laughs> let's see uh dr seuss dr seuss type of styles and this is i think this is what the dr seuss cover for butter butter battle lo book looked like or maybe one of the images from it so i was kind of doing like a bit of an homage there um <laughs> War, the war of the starkle and the squirkle <laughs> the are are this the war of the starkle and the squarekle <laughs> and they had like all like very weird names like there's going to be two tribes the starkle tribe which is also known as spaguna and the squarekle tribe that's also known as zalrog <laughs> and they were supposed to have like their own like emblems and stuff and I did a lot of design work for it, a lot of world building, not much writing for the actual. Well, I did do some a lot of writing for the actual story, but it, it never turned into a full script. So a lot of that writing is right here in these pages, trying to figure out like, um, you know, like outlines and stuff. And uh, this is when I was trying to draw. Wow, that was a while ago. I was trying to draw this Moby Dick thing commission that never got finished this is me actually drawing some other stuff some of this i think was adam's one of adam's characters and i was trying to like do my own version of it um whales south claw this is something that may or may not become a thing eventually one day maybe not so uh yeah yeah Oh, this is uh, what's this guy's name again? Back from back from the um, Fleischer Studio stuff. I can't remember his name. One of you guys will know. Uh, more stuff for Armor Girl. Grok. That's a pretty cool design, actually. I think. Prisha. 
possibly her name. She's a warrior person. And this was me like trying to work out some of the proportions for the uh, Zalrog um, clan. So, yeah. And this is just straight up copying some Fleischer Studio stuff. So that's fun. More stuff, more ideas. Just drawing from life stuff, probably from Pinterest or something. So, yeah. Thumbnails. Here's some glyph. Uh, let's see, some more glyph. This must be when I was trying to get glyph going again. I kind of like this design here, actually, a lot. Maybe I should try to revisit that design. Not that I'm really doing much with Glyph these days, but more design tries. These aren't too bad either. And then this is, I created the, this guy, Manifesto. Actually, I think I did create this, but at one point, Fue was kind of helping me with some writing, and he kind of up, came up with a couple characters. So I don't know if he came up with this character or I did, but I did the design of, of it. And here's the full drawing. This turned into a full, co fully colored piece. So this is what my art looks like when I do it and I enjoy it and I do a good job. Like this to me is a cool piece, you know? So, yeah. Here's a little uh, LL Cool J when he was younger. Shadow Star and Death Row. I don't know. I don't know. No, this is Mohawk and Bolt. So I, when I was younger, I, you know, in my nineties, in the nineties, I was trying to create these characters called Buzzcut and Mohawk. You know, typical. And uh, this was me trying to redesign them in like a more modern way, and I didn't really get very far with it. But it's it's sort of looking okay. Not anything like what I originally had. And then me trying to create like a almost like a cartoony version of Glyph. This is like the Von Bodie style version. And trying to riff off of that and see if I could I should play around with that again too. That that'd be fun. Uh more glyph stuff. More glyph stuff. More glyph stuff. See, now this is like a finished piece that I don't like. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's okay. It's not horribly bad, but it, it's compared to like something like, where is it? Compared to this, it's like light years apart. This looks like I almost don't know how to draw. This looks cool. <laughs> and, and the truth is I kind of don't know how to draw sometimes, but I probably could have like redrawn this in it in the same pose and kind of the same situation and been much more satisfied with the drawing. But something about this just doesn't work for me. I do like the pose though. And here we go trying to draw that manifesto guy in a different um, kind of, a little bit of a different pose and some weird oh this was gonna would be like a weird announcer character <laughs> excuse me some life drawing gesture type gesture drawings um <laughs> i'm a b girl in my b girl world <laughs> in my way in my day we didn't have to use our ak's <laughs> Uh, oh, I get around, round and round, round and round. <laughs> so this is more like, so if you've read my mini comics, there's this old lady named Mrs. Sedgwick. And that comes from Sedgwick Park, which is like the birthplace of hip hop. That was where they had one of the, the park jams that was infamous. In fact, they're actually having, um, they're, they're going to be having an event there soon and it's free to the public and like KRS one is like part of it and all these like classic B boys and it's going to be kind of awesome, but I'm not going, but it's going to be right there in the Bronx where it all kind of started. 
So that's interesting. But I called her Miss Sedgwick um, because of that. And uh, I had this whole kind of developed thing with her. Um, but uh, for for one of my many iterations of trying to write glyph, some more uh, <clears throat> gesture stuff. And then Tusk. Tusk is a cool character if I ever do anything past the first comic i ever made i drew tusk in it and since then i haven't done too much with him king tusk though that's kind of a cool drawing then this is uh just drawing from pictures i guess i don't remember exactly what from but kind of looks like some of the oh i know what this is this is um calamity jane so uh this is like from a real picture of of the woman known as calamity jane i guess so i was just kind of trying to work my way up to some kind of um design and then shadow star i mean i when i was doing the sketchbook i was like trying to do like five or six or seven different comics at once but i was writing them i like my plan was to mostly write them and then kind of draw them as i could and uh i don't know shadow star again that's just another character i want to draw the my my group shadow of the locust the christian hip-hop group they just came out with an uh the second there's our second album and uh, i got a few stuff some some lyrics on, on a few of the songs and um so there is a link in the there's a um a link uh link tree link in in the description if you're interested in checking out that album, it's it's out there on Spotify and many other places, so you can check that out. Um, but every once in a while, I kind of draw locust characters and stuff, and and so that was one time when I did that. And then here again, like I said, Shadow Star. This, you know, I kind of created a pretty good design there. I think, like, again, this drawing I don't super love specifically, but not every drawing comes out great. So, but I do kind of like the, the, uh, you know, the design of the costume. Darby Cufflink. This actually did happen. I made that comic. Oh, that's another piece of news. I'm pretty sure I'm going to, um, I'm going to let me know if you guys would like to purchase. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you don't, that's kind of fine too, but like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do like a print on demand, um, book where I just publish most of the comics I've ever made in one like little volume and it won't be too expensive. I don't know how many pages it'll end up being maybe a hundred, um, <clears throat> you know, kind of nine volt anthology style. So, oh yeah, this is just like more locust kind of designs locusty type of designs character designs at one point many points i wanted to make like a shadow of the locust comic and it just never happened this was the character the bat the big bad guy in darby cufflink um so there's that uh what's this oh yeah i was gonna call one of these stories for glyph bad meaning good and there's some thumbnails and writing ideas man i gotta i just want to make comics this is actually a really cool design for um for uh stick up kid which is one of the characters in glyph his like best friend that's actually really good i scratched all this stuff out i guess or i this might have been like my nephew scratching stuff around and i don't know who drew this I wonder who drew this because this is not my style unless i might have been copying somebody's style that's probably what it was i think i was copying somebody's style i might have been copying um teresa's style uh teresa um pilar who's been on my channel many times a long time ago but um i talked to her recently she's doing awesome making comics and stuff um, and you know, I have a comic that I'm going to be, that I actually is finished. I just have to put the dialogue on and which she drew my romance comic. Um, it's, I think it's like eight pages. I just got to do the dialogue for it and then I could publish it. So you guys can read it. It'd be cool. Um, 
but anyways, I think I was copying her style there because that looks like her style, especially the head. So sometimes I do that too. I try to copy people's style just to practice things and see what I like and study study what they do. Um, it's not because I'm trying to steal it or anything. Corn Cob Rob, that became a full comic. Here's some more of Corn Cob Rob. And that one will be probably would be one of the ones published in this book as well. You know, they're not amazing, but yeah, this is geez, I would, this is this book like is like the best documentation of my comics. Cause when I was most actively actually making comics, I made, you know, Corn Cob Rob. It's like a 25 page comic. And and you know, Darby Cufflink got made. That's like eight page comic, I think. The Crow. That's that's something that would have been in like a second. Um, would have been a character in like the second uh, Corn Cob Rob if I ever did it. Bob Vacado. <laughs> I was getting into like uh, conspiracy theories and stuff then. So he's got like a masonry hat or something, and there's like this character with the cloak and stuff. So there was definitely going to be like some conspiracy theory type stuff in this book and then pineapple pete i think his name was <laughs> i think he showed he was in the comic i'm pretty sure he was like the bartender in the comic so let's see and then the other characters these were like uh corn cob robs um you know, group of skateboard friends and punk rock friends is supposed to have like a big punk rock edge to it, this whole comic. And it, it did, but it got less punk rock than I kind of wanted it to. So, and this is uh pig nut. <laughs> He's like the kind of the cop that gets kind of, um, kind of picked on by the other cops type of dude. Uh, and then this was supposed to be like a memorial drawing for, for Stan Lee, but I never finished it, but he's sitting next to like a comic book rack and he's sitting there reading comics, um, Avengers. So, you know, and I, I think, I don't know. It looks like I could have drawn it from my head, but it also looks like I drew it from reference. I'm not sure. I know it's kind of hard to see. But uh, I'm going to get back to the chat soon. After this sketchbook, I'll get back to the chat, and then we'll get into doing some drawing. And uh, we will um, – in fact, I might be – oh, no, I was going to say I might be done with this sketchbook, but now it's, like, upside down. Sometimes I do that. I go from the backward – back, kind of back from the other side, too. Um. So this was actually for a commission. Some guy wanted me to draw him as like a superhero, so I did. And he sort of looks, no, yeah, he doesn't really look like this. That that was a commission I actually finished, and that was cool. Wheeze the satellite kid. I don't. I guess the the finished drawing isn't in here. I think I might have done that one digitally. You know, getting the iPad actually was a big part of me um, starting to finally finish comics, too. I think I, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did a bunch of stuff with the iPad at this point, but maybe not. Maybe this was, because I also, I still have my um, drawing tablet. I think it's a Huyan one or whatever, um, and I never use it. Maybe I should set it up. Maybe it would make things easier to a certain degree. I don't know. Yeah, see, you can see I wrote copy. Heroes copying somebody's style. Copy again, you know. So, some gesture work. Copy. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll usually write it if I copied something from somebody. This is where I'm trying to learn about the Dan Harmon story circle and then, you know, maybe trying to get my characters to, to have the story circle work and unicorns versus what was it something versus unicorns 
the one hundred, the second one hundred days of making comics anthology. Werewolves and unicorns. That's right. <laughs> so that was my unicorn character, and I don't think my werewolf character is in here, but I gotta that that would go also in the. Um, here's some more of that. That would also go in the um, in th the my my own personal anthology, Terra and the Terra Doctopus. This is where the idea came from, and uh, yeah, then I made a little mini comic out of that. That actually got finished. I might have to do like a separate mini comics anthology, but I only have like four mini comics, so it's kind of weird. But it doesn't seem like the right format to like fit into a bigger size book and i really like like this cartoony spawn and here's like another scribbly version of it like i feel like it would be fun to make like a, a little bootleg spawn cartoony comic you know but never i don't know if i'll ever get to that but that's something i wanted to maybe do uh yeah more character designy type stuff and sketching Oh, yeah, Gush. That was another comic idea I had about this kid who just, like, pukes all over the place. It's so stupid, but I even kind of wrote it. I was going to just draw it. It was, it was meant to be just, like, a comic that was just fun to draw, like, crazy stuff in. <laughs> and it was going to be called Gush. Oh, boy. Punch Out. That's the name of the, the one I had for... Yeah, here's more on the Gush, I guess, but... You know, that's the comic. The punch out is the comic I did for the second 100 Days of Making the Comics anthology. Oh, and then this was when I did a, I did a, a, a mix between Spawn and Captain America for, um, it was like supposed to be a mashup challenge that I did between myself and another channel. And I forget what the name of that channel was. Here's some of that werewolf stuff. And then this one's another one where I'm like, I don't know if I copied this from somebody, but this is like, a Doctor Strange that I really love the pose of, but I'm like, I think I could, I might have possibly copied that idea from somebody, so I can't use it because <laughs> I really like that pose. I would turn that into like a finished drawing if, if I was sure that I, you know, didn't copy it. But this is like a, a better version of that werewolf character from the Punch Out comic, and this is like me designing the referee from that Punch Out comic. A little alien referee guy he ended up kind of looking like this or this this i think was closest to the final design i think that's what i based the final design off of when i drew it in the comic um a cartoony version of the comic i did do with my with um D doug garrett is that the right name i think so yeah um the lone wolf comic anthology that he did and this is how I was originally going to draw that comic, like in this style. And then I drew it kind of in a different style that was not as cool looking as this, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I don't know where things went wrong, but I still like how that comic came out. That's probably the best example of a fully professional colored comic that I ever did. And then this is me designing the demon bear and designing other characters from the co that comic that one could possibly get in the anthology too even though i didn't write it you know i'm sure he would let me this i thought was a cool design of one of the demon characters in the um in the comic so we're almost there blizzard this one is a character that Fue actually created for the Glyph comic where he was trying to like help me kind of write the Glyph comic. That's still something that could eventually happen, but you know, it may or may not ever happen. But anyways, he created this character Blizzard and this was like my first iteration at trying to draw him as a character. And it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I probably would change the face a bit, like, or something. I don't know. But it's kind of neat. It's not horrible. 
I'm, I might have to do a little refinement if I ever do it. See, so you can say I copy here, Marco Scorea. I don't know who that is, but I copied them on Instagram and wrote it there. Um, yeah. So that's it for the sketchbook. That was a pretty good one, even though I have shown it in the past. But, uh, you know, I don't know. It's fun to look at art, right? So let's check into the chat, and I'll start drawing some stuff real quick. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, my. There's a lot of stuff going on. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys um, and gals. Let's see. <laughs> Is that the Grinch? I don't, it's possible. I do like the Grinch, but I don't think I've drawn the Grinch in a long time, if I ever even have. Uh, let's see. I copy too. Yeah, see, I'm not the only one. What's up, Robert Foster? Thanks for coming by. Let me get my sketchbook out. Where is my sketchbook? The one I actually am drawing in. Oh, you know what? It's in the other room. I'm not going to go get it. I have a million sketchbooks that need to be sketched in here, so we'll just go to one of these. Why not? What should I draw? What should I draw? Maybe I'll just draw from reference something that I maybe won't been wanting to draw. Try to get through some of these uh, chats real quick. Muttman says death. Yes, death. Absolutely death. <laughs> Probably talking about that drawing I did of um, Russ's character. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I never got the second issue of Only Death Can Save Us. Every time I tried to back it, my bank would reject the transaction because it showed from Britain and they thought it was identi identity theft. You know, I've had problems trying to to order stuff too from like Indiegogo and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm not surprised. But hey, um, if you want a copy, I might be able to help you out with that because uh, I got like, three or four copies because <laughs> I backed it like insane amount of times. I don't know why. I don't know why I backed it so much. I just got excited, I guess. <laughs> so, um, and I had money at that time. It was kind of silly, but I did get some original art from Russ through, you know, that was one of the things I got and that was really cool. Uh, let's see. Peter, also known as Imperian Vol, says, Hey, all awesome sketchbook. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for, coming by and like i said let me put that link in the chat again if you guys want to hang out I, I talked about this at the beginning of the show but not everybody was here um but uh the um the adventures and comic making uh server which is now on gilded um is live we just got it live and um so and there is a link in the description as well but if you are curious to hang out with some people who make comics and get some encouragement and who knows maybe even possibly some guidance and stuff if you're having a hard time with something we love helping people out uh check out this link and sign up to the server um, cause it's, it's a fun place. And again, we don't get into any spicy talk, Josh. So if you come in, don't come in with any spicy talk. <laughs> we don't get into religion and politics and all that jazz. We just talk about comics and art and having fun with that. So, um, and you know, that's also where the nine volt anthology is kind of, uh, based out of i mean we're just getting started back over there because we were doing it on discord but now we're doing it on gilded so the link adventures in comic making uh community i guess is up and live if you guys are interested in checking it out and being a part of something awesome so yeah the old Popeyes. Yes, I love I love Popeye. 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 I there is a theory out there that Popeye might have been the first superhero in comics. Just saying. Because he's kind of like a superhero, right? Like who else is out there that has like powers like he does, you know, before before he came out. You know, and then there's Superman, but you know, 
that was after Popeye came out. So I saw your Greek mythology book bowl. Very cool. Hmm. I didn't see that. I'll have to check that out. I might have, but like I said, check out Empyrean Vol's um YouTube channel. He's I don't know. I I um I've been really enjoying just sitting there and he does like a lot of times half hour videos and he's just uh, almost every day, pretty much every day. I think he's got a video out and he's just drawing comics or doing some painting or doing something, you know, artistic. Usually it's drawing comics. Um, and I don't know. I really enjoy just listening and drawing or, you know, usually I'm out doing yard work and stacking wood and doing kind of my semi farm kind of life. But, you know, that happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's a very cool design thank you i don't know which design you're talking about but thank you <laughs> let's see i like what i've seen of parasite yeah parasite's a cool book and cool anime you know i only read and watched like the first ones you know even though i've had at least the second volume at some point i don't know why i never read more but it was back when i didn't really read manga that much so Landon Huber, what's up? Hey, Marshall, how are you doing? Did you end up going into that computer science job? I am working towards it. <laughs> That's what I need to do. Like, I need to get a job right now. Like, it's it's time. It's time to get the job. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm still uh, I'm still learning. I'm I'm still in the depths of learning JavaScript. Um, and I've gotten pretty far, but I, I got a lot long way to go. But that being said, um, you know, I got through CSS, HTML, Java, and almost through JavaScript. And uh, the next class will be a little more JavaScript, and then we're going to get into React. But I don't have time. I need to get a job now. So, um, you know, I'm going to be getting a job soon. I don't know. it. I'm hoping it's for something within the realm of uh, what I'm studying for. But if not, I'm still dedicated to making that career happen. It's just uh, learning this stuff is difficult and it's taken me longer than I expected. So um, that's all right though. We're gonna, we're gonna make this big career jump sooner, sooner, soon enough. So, wow, it's, it's over. It's already been over an hour. I better get to drawing. <laughs> Yes, that's Bimbo the Clown. That's right. That is right. Thank you. Coco. Is it Coco or Bimbo? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's Coco spelled this way. And what's up, Terhiki? Thanks for coming by. It might be Coco. Yeah, because Bimbo, uh, you know what? It's still from the Fleischer Studios, but Bimbo is a different character. And I've drawn him as well. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Coco, you're right. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> I was drawing all those characters for a while too. So um, let's see. I love your high contrast lines, Marsh. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I, sometimes I, I pull it off. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the thickness of the lines. Yes. Sometimes I like to do the thick lines. Sometimes I don't. And maybe that's what was the difference between the one glyph I didn't like and the you know, that other character, um, manifesto. So yeah, I don't know. I like the granny. <laughs> Thanks, man. Maybe that'll turn into a comic one of these days. Where can we check that out? Marsh, which one, which one? Um, a lot of my comics are at webtoons, but not all of them. Um, I don't think there's anything at donkeyjawprojects.com. There might be one or two comics still in donkeyjawprojects.com. I'm not sure which one you're thinking of because there's a couple things um, that d got published behind the scenes um, for my Patreon when I was doing it, uh, and they never got republished. So that stuff, again, um, I'm planning on publishing, though, all of that stuff in uh in this anthology i don't know what i'm going to call this anthology but uh let's see projects.com i don't know if i have any i don't think i do have any comics up anymore um because I, I i need to rework my site like there's some things that are off on it and you know so unfortunately oh 
Wait, I wonder if it's still. Yeah, yeah. Here it says you have to. Oh, you can get it on Gumroad. You can get Corn Cob Rob on Gumroad. I forgot about that. <laughs> I don't even know if I got any sales anytime recently. I'll throw that link in here though. You, it's like three dollars or something. <laughs> I don't even know if I can still sign into my Gumroad. But here, I'll send you guys a link to that. <laughs> Some people did buy it though from there at one point. Oh, where did it go? Did I like delete it by accident? What happened? Oh my. Oh, here it is. Okay. So if you guys want to read Corn Cob Rob and the Perilous Sky Ramp, I'll have to finish the cover I made for it too. I was working on the cover and uh, it's mostly finished, really. I just need to color it, really. So. I don't know. Or I could do like a, a grayscale thing. We'll see. But uh, here is the link for Corn Cob Rob. I forgot that this is even available. <laughs> and I think Darby Cufflink is is also available on that same Gumroad. So if you want to check out Darby Cufflink, it should be there. Probably for like two bucks or something. Corn Cob Rob. There we go. Awesome. That's kind of fun. I didn't realize. Let me see if I could find Darby Cup, Cup Link on there. Where is there a way? Here we go. Donkey Jaw Projects. Oh, and I have the Hitchhiker on there, which is in the first 100 Days of Making Comics anthology. But you can also check it out here. Let me give you the full Gumroad link, actually, to everything. But we got Darby Cuff, Cuff Link. Here, let me, I could bring it up on the video thing here. Let's see. Will we even get to drawing? I don't know. We shall see. Um, let's see. How do I present? We'll present this. Share screen. Here we go. We'll share this bad boy. All right. So here we go. Donkey Jaw Projects, Gumroad. We got Darby Cufflink. Gentleman Avenger of Comics. Let's see if we can see a nice bigger view. No, there's no big view. Well, that sucks. But the, I did like an homage to the old Marvel Comics Presents comic uh, with from by Sam Keith um, on the cover for uh, Wol the Wolverine Sam Keith kind of homage cover. And I did write after Sam Keith on the bottom and stuff. So that was a really fun like cover to do. the The comic inside is not this detailed. It's a, a different, weird, like sort of cartoony version of it. But you know, at least on the cover, I did that fun like thing. And uh, let's see. So that's that. Corn Cob Rob. See, this is too big now. <laughs> Corn Cob Rob and the Perilous Sky Ramp. So there's that one. When's the last time you read a story about a punk rock corn cob? Well, you're in luck, because that's what this is. Skater vegetables duking it out to save a comic book reading young pepper dude. What could go wrong? <laughs> corn cob Rob, there you go. <laughs> Me and my goofy ideas. Let's see what this one says. Darby loves comics, but in a future world where the fashion of the day is people ignorantly cosplaying as his favorite characters, he just might not be able to keep his cool. This is a fun eight-page comic book by Marshall Lee, ready for you to read on your phone or tablet. Enjoy. <laughs> there you go. And then, of course, the hitchhiker. Oh, wow, that's a big image. That's kind of cool. So this one says nothing. There's no cool blurb about it. Man, I'm a lazy bastard. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, let me put the uh, the full link to all three of these. <laughs> this is so fun. I kind of forgot that this even existed. Uh, let's see. Do do do. But these comics will be in the anthology that I make. It'll be a, a print-on-demand anthology. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get to making it. I want to make it, but I also have to find all these files and stuff. 
<laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, that's where you can check them out, Josh. Thanks for asking because it made me find some of these things. <laughs> uh, do I have ev everything available? No, but it will. I'm going to try to get it all in that uh, that anthology whenever I do it. Uh, let's see. Deist, what's up? Hello, Marsh. I haven't been around for a lot of your streams, but I enjoy listening to your points. Hey, thanks. I'm glad it's helpful. The other comic guy, what's up? What's up? Thanks for coming by. Uh, where do we go? Mutt, I'm just checking checked out your music. It's awesome. Do you rap or make the music? Uh, on that album, I think there might be one beat of mine, but I also have like, I think there's like four or five tracks that I'm on. There's one track that doesn't say I'm on it, but I'm on it. Um, it's like the third track or something. Um, it's and I'm on at the very end, and it's one of my favorite verses on on the album. Uh, I'm on the first song actually. I'm the last guy in the first song. Uh, so and it should be. I think it usually says all the people, and if it says complex, then I'm on it. So I got like five five songs where I have a verse on it. <clears throat> um, I do have more music where like I have solo album and stuff where I rapped and a lot of my music these days is just instrumental. I don't really do much rapping anymore, but there is a, there's a song called mustard tree on that album. And on the one that the, the shadow of the locust album. And uh, that is something I recorded like literally a few weeks ago that verse that I have on there. Um, I think I'm the second to the last rapper on that one. Um, so that's like the most recent thing I've ever made <laughs> for rapping. It's been a long time since I've recorded my voice on things, but yeah. Uh, let's see. I love that spawn cap character. That was cool. I know like that. I wish actually, I think I could show that too. Um, on my, my, um, actual donkeyjawprojects.com uh thingy here let's see i could go through my little portfolio here if you guys haven't seen it uh well there's some cool stuff on here but that 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 one drawing isn't i wish it was uh but hey why not let's go through this real quick because it's fun <laughs> I'm not even, I haven't even gotten to the topic today, but maybe this will be an extra long video. I don't know. I don't mean to, to make you guys go long. I should drink some of this water and I only have so much energy in and of itself myself, but I'm kind of having fun today. So sorry. It's kind of one of those, com those, those videos. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to share screen. Uh, 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 donkey jaw projects here we go and so this is me just doing a commit um not a commission uh just some fan art of like a public domain character it's a little bit wonky to be honest like the the line work but this is one of my first times really trying to ink something in um like procreate i think and so i don't know i think i even remember drawing doing the inking for this and just feeling like like i wasn't in the the mood for being careful <laughs> but i still like this piece it came out cool the infamous attack of the lizard brain cover wish it was bigger because it would look cooler on you guys screen but yeah, this is where I tried to do like my homage to, you know, um, what is it? The the tomb, what are the, I can't, again, I can't think of words, but the EC Comics um, tomb book. <laughs> what the heck is it called? Uh, but anyways, this is an homage to a specific cover by Jack Davis. Um, but I used obviously the lizard brain and uh, yeah, this came out really cool. There's still some, I still have a few posters left of it. Um, 
I guess I could sell them. <laughs> They're so hard to ship though. Like I, you gotta like have certain spe special shipping some that corn cob rob cover without the words you know so there's that q-tip just a drawing of q-tip that i colored i did a little like instagram video i think of this one of the characters uh garrett carrot i think his name was <laughs> he was like the big bad guy in in uh in corn cob rob king tusk dun 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 this is probably the the most fully finished um drawing you know like colored drawing i've ever done of king tusk uh came out pretty cool you know cartoony kind of wonky muscles but i guess that's about as good as i i can do generally anyways so you know it is what it is there's that guy the the um pineapple pete pete's pilsners three bucks a pop <laughs> uh and uh you know from lord of the rings the uh, uh oh i think i wonder if i got like poison ivy i wouldn't be surprised running out trying to chop logs if i got freaking poison ivy again <clears throat> that's not good anyways um so that's uh gandalf you know from lord of the rings i had fun making that um yeah, that was like in the early days of me learning how to do some digital art. Actually, I think I think I I colored this digitally, but I think it's inked traditionally. I think I even still have the inked piece. So, oh, and then there's that finished uh shark knife piece. Going a little crazy with the uh trying to do like the the um comic book dot effect and some just different effects i think this came out pretty rad actually uh and then here's one of the i think the first two pages from corn cob rob are here but I, I didn't actually color it i only colored these first two pages and then i gave up i guess on coloring it <laughs> and these were the this is how the comic was supposed to look a little more punk rocky and i feel like these these pages kind of did it justice, and then I kind of lost touch of the punk rock vibe after that. So um, this isn't even as punk rock as I would have liked to make it, though, style-wise, you know. But I still like it. And there's that Darby Car Cufflink. Again, these aren't, like, super big, though, you know, for you guys, unfortunately. Um, but yeah there it is and this was this also was another very early digital drawing like one of my first ones and i think it came out pretty good um i think i copied no this this character yeah it was in one of those like marvel comics like uh i forget what the name of it was the but those comics where you get like it shows like all the different characters and it has like profiles of of like I don't know, like a good like 30 or so, so characters or something. And it's like a, a little issue. And, uh, you know, this was one of the characters, and I don't remember what what his name is. I think he's like a bad guy in one of the X-Men comics, maybe. I don't know. But kind of, I think this came out pretty cool, actually. And, hey... <laughs> You better check yourself before you riggedy wreck yourself. Here you go, some ice cube. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Um, and this is uh, from from Attack of the Lizard Brain. So that was traditionally done with some Copic gray tones. Still have those pages. This is Hitchhiker's the the hitch the Hitchhiker. <laughs> A page from that. And this was a traditional piece with watercolor of Mr. Deadpool, kind of chibi version. You can see like the little heart shape hole in his chest. So that was a fun one. <laughs> I did this one, I think, for like when I was trying to do like art videos on my YouTube channel. Um, kind of, uh, you know, in, in that YouTube style. What's There's a girl who does YouTube videos, Mary something, Mary, Mary Doodles or something. And I, I was like kind of doing 
similar kind of videos like she does trying to at least because i don't know i just like how she did them and i wanted to do cool art videos so yeah this one also was part of that this is just like a con a conceptual piece i still have this art this is one of those ones i i maybe i'll put this one up on my um etsy to sell you know because it's kind of a cool piece but uh you know an astronaut playing music and a heart in the background, I don't know. It's weird. Trippy. Kind of cool. Watercolors and inks, baby. Punk Rockzilla. That was another one that was done for a video. So, yeah. There's videos on my cha channel with all these, with a bunch of these. And then Groot, this original one was uh, purchased by um, a friend of mine in Australia who made, co made the Pandia comic. And what's his name? It's been so long since I've kind of talked to that guy and i can't remember his name i just had his comic out the other day too but he doesn't he ended up doing um like blender tutorials on his youtube channel more and i don't think he really does comics anymore but there was a little group drawing drawing that one was done in uh i think colored pencils and there was watercolor and then colored pencils and ink of course too or maybe not even ink i think the black might have and I think I was doing that like back when I was like really into like when Jeff Lafferty was kind of first starting out with his channel and he was doing more of that kind of thing. I think that's what the inspiration to use that medium was for me. So, but there's, this is just the print version. Like there's, you can see writing on the bottom. I have prints of this still. Um, so yeah, Mike Fiend. I also have similar prints of this one. And I just, this is another one where I really like the drawing. This is like how I want my style to always look, you know, and it's similar to that manifesto drawing. Like I love, I mean, maybe the face is a little weird and wonky, but he's meant to be like this crazy hip hop zombie dude. So it kind of works, but like the body and everything like this is, I like that style and I wish I kind of was more consistently drawing in that style sometimes. Oops. Oh no. So that might be the end of it. Any? Oh no, I got a couple more. This was uh, what's that movie? There was that movie. Like, there was a couple like really um, funny like movies about like the eighties and stuff. And this was one of them. And it was like this guy who raced, and this girl character was the best. Like, she was really cool. But there's been like some really nostalgia 80s stuff going on for a while back in 2016, apparently. And uh, this was a watercolor piece I did of her. And I can't remember what her name is, but yeah. And everybody's seen this because this is what I use for a lot of profile image things. But watercolor and ink um, still have this piece as well. Uh, yeah, it's one of one of those pieces that came out pretty good. And I don't like this one. I need to take this one down. But I had this whole idea of like um, this rocket ship thing. And I don't know. It's kind of silly. I don't even like this that much anymore. But yeah, <laughs> there's me with a rocket ship strapped to the back of my me with uh, comic book pages in my hand. So, <laughs> so yeah, there's that. <laughs> a lot of little show and tell stuff here today. Uh, uh, uh. All right, I'm going to try to get to some drawing, just a little bit of drawing so we can talk about this topic real quick, and uh, and uh, we can also um, get to some of the chat here. So I don't know what to draw, though. What can I draw? I want to draw, like, one of my characters, but which one? <laughs> I have a lot of characters, but not as many comics to for those characters to be in. <laughs> Oh, there's a pen in here. That's why I can't close it right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we got like Corn Cob Rob. What else, what else we got? We got Darby Cufflink. We got uh, <laughs> we got a lot of different things. We got Glyph. I'll just start like scribbling some stuff and see where where things go. I've been watching this dude's videos. Have you heard of um? rod gone or whatever he's got some cool videos and kind of teaching all these like tips and tricks about like drawing like 
I don't know. It's it's pretty cool. He's got some some tricks that I've never heard of, you know, before. So I don't know if I'm doing that those tricks or anything, but yeah, I don't know. He kind of had some characters like this, but it's kind of before too, where it's just like this weird like swoopy gestural like character thing and so when i saw him doing that i was like oh i've done stuff like that before actually too but yeah anyways so um the topic was meant to be you know <clears throat> leveling up by slowing down <laughs> with your comics and um I guess it's, it's kind of cool that I showed all that stuff because that represents a time where I was like trying to kind of do comics. Uh, I was really trying to go at the let's let's do comics as, as a profession and let's let's turn this into something really viable. And. Uh, I don't know, like. I was really going for it. And the thing is, though, is, and I, I was doing some cool stuff, you know, but um, it just in some ways didn't pan out. I mean, it did pan out for what it was. It, it worked, you know, but I, I just didn't get as many comics out as I would have normally liked to. And uh, so or or as but i got more comics out at that time than i ever probably have you know maybe 2020s 2018 2019 2020 uh you know i was really kind of going going for it and doing the youtube channel at the same time and um you know i'd like to get back to that to a certain degree you know but also um I feel like I tried to take on too much and I tried to hit it maybe too hard sometimes. Um, and so, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I was having this conversation actually on the, the, um, the Gilded server today. And, you know, sometimes the goal for people is to like speed up. They, they want to make their, their comic process or their art process go faster. And, and they have good reasons for that. And I think that that is a good thing sometimes. Um, but for me lately, it's actually been the opposite. That's that I think is good for me. Um, for me, I feel like I need to slow down a little bit. I, I've been with really with everything, a lot of things in my life. I'm very hasty. More, more. I mean, I'm just not that I'm like the worst at being like hasty or whatever, but sometimes I'm just a little bit too hasty. And uh, and I think sometimes it's it's a disservice. You know, uh, I'm doing a disservice to myself by being too hasty. And so what I've kind of come to the conclusion of is I just want to make, I want to level up. I want to do better, you know, and, and it's okay if it takes a while for certain projects to get done. And, you know, and I feel like sometimes some of my comic work has suffered for me just wanting to be too hasty a little bit. And so I don't want to do that so much anymore. I want to, I do want to produce though. Like I do agree with the idea of like, you know, getting a huge amount of volume out and it's gonna, it's gonna lead to, to good work. You know, I do believe in, in kind of, uh, quantity just by the sheer quantity of work, you will get better you know, but, um, yeah, I think that that's not always helpful though. And, and for me, you know, you got to kind of know yourself, 
know thyself, right? You got to kind of know, know yourself where you're at and, uh, and, and what makes sense for you. So kind of nowadays, my, my philosophy still is going to be like, I want to get a lot of comics out and stuff, but I want to make sure I'm spending the proper amount of time on those comics and not trying to be too hasty about it. So that's kind of what I was thinking a little bit. Um, again, I, I wasn't able to like really get good uh, notes this time around with, with my video and stuff, but um, I'm trying to see if there, there's some stuff where I can remember uh, a little bit of what I wanted to say if there's a little bit more to it. And I think, I suspect there's a little bit more to it. Um, I just think it's a little bit of a healthier thing personally for me to focus on that. But the thing is, is like, um, I have, you know, I've been in this comics world hanging out with, with peers for a long time. And I have seen a lot of people do different approaches and stuff. And I've definitely seen some people uh, with kind of who, who I feel like these tend to be people who have gotten to a higher form of mastery with their craft than I have. Like they kind of figured out their style. And they've, they've, I don't know, they just kind of figured out the way they like to draw things or do their work, you know. And, and so for them, it's like, okay, I kind of figured it out. Now it's time to kind of build on that and, and really um, get things to a point where I'm, um, I'm doing things more efficiently and I am having a quicker style and stuff like that. So I do think that certain people at, at different are, everybody's at like different levels, you know, of ability. And so for certain people, it does make sense. Like, okay, I'm putting out quality work on a consistent basis. You know, I've, I've kind of mastered my way of doing things you know, now let's see if I can get some speed going. Because if I can do that, then I can maximize, uh, I can mac maximize my efforts, you know? And I think that's awesome as well. So, but I think there's also, like, I think I've talked about this before, but um, mm -hmm. there's this idea that, that um, Fue also known as Lucifer Storm, and I have talked about together just as friends and buddies and stuff of like uh, one, one project a year type of thing. Like what if you just spend a year to finish one project, but it's like a really good project, like it's really well done. And say I just do one project a year for, you know, pretty consistently for years in a row. And so I'm putting kind of like my all into this one project every year. Well, compared to most indie creators, that's a pretty good track record, actually. A lot mm -hmm. of indie creators don't put out that much work, even in like a lot of indie creators, it takes some years to just put out one comic, you know? And, and that's not to talk crap about anybody i i get it like we, a lot of us have like day jobs and stuff and you know we don't have time to do like a crazy amount of work or whatever so it's understandable there's a lot of different reasons life gets in the way whatever things happen um but uh so I don't know what I'm drawing here. I'm just doodling, but <laughs> um, so I just uh, think that uh, 
it's it's okay like I, i'm not talking crap about anybody but if i were to be like if i were like less anxious and feeling less hasty and less like i gotta get more stuff out i gotta get more co- like multiple comics out a year um that that pressure there, there's a pressure that comes with that that actually causes me to do less comics sometimes you know what i mean um so maybe i'd be better off by just saying no don't don't put this pressure on yourself just the comic is done when the comic is done just do your best with it you know just try to make it the best thing you can make it and especially i feel like especially when it comes to the writing because if there's anything that that is lacking that that we're missing in comics it's good writing and and it's not to say that there is no good writing that's not what i'm saying but you know there's definitely less like there's a lot of good artwork out there there's a lot of good artwork out there from my peers as well as just professionals and stuff I don't know, like people talk about like, oh, I go into the comic shop and it seems like there's no good art anymore. And I don't agree with that, actually. I see a lot of cool art that I, I actually think is really neat. Um, but uh, I, I think there's a lot of great art out there. There, I feel like there's there's more a surplus of people who can make great art for comics than there is of people who can um write good comics you know and and i'm i'm happy to to read some comics that are just like your typical level of writing like i'm not really trying to talk crap even about that you know um there's a tradition of where comics is just not meant to be like high literature you know uh it's meant to be just kind of fun stuff that that's almost throwaway reading, you know, not always, but in some instances it has, you know, in a lot of tradition of comics, it kind of has been that, uh, obviously some people have raised the bar that once in a while, but a lot of times the bar is not raised, you know, in that way. So for me personally, I I want, I want to see a little bit more of the potential of comics um more often you know and and like i said when i read gary hodges dinosaurs versus mars bots and when i read my buddy lucifer storms ed gein demon hunter and um you know even i kill giants was kind of there but not quite as good as those two to me in my opinion um and and there's been some others that i've read like um Walking Dead was really good. Sin City was pretty good as far as like Sin City was good on a different level. Um, You know, there's other comics that I've read um, that were better writing and stuff. But, uh, you know, it's hard to find sometimes. So I that's what I I don't want to be hasty with my writing. And I don't know what I'll be if I'll ever be able to write anything that's like up to the level of what i'd like it to be you know to be honest i'm i'm not saying i'll even be able to do it it's it's hard you got to take writing seriously you know um and and it's it takes a lifetime you know i mean you can get some mastery of it but you'll you'll always be learning your whole life when it comes to writing same with art you know um so you can get to a certain point but then also like you know you're always going to be learning and stuff so anyways i don't know i think that i think that i still want to be a very productive creator um but there's a term there's the saying that haste makes waste you know and as cheesy as that may sound it's kind of true you know (laughs) uh haste does kind of make waste um and sometimes i wonder if i've been too hasty in my life when it comes to making comics and, and just a lot of things you know 
And so, I don't know, I think that we can, and, and again, this is me just talking about me, but maybe maybe other people fall into this too. I don't know. Um, but maybe like trying to rush things is doing a disservice if, if we are trying to rush things. And I, again, I'm definitely not, there are some people like, you know, Peter Seckler in here, like he kicks butt when it comes to making comics and he's doing his thing. And I think he's getting good results. I've definitely seen so much improvement um, throughout the last few years of him working on this stuff. Um, but I, I enjoy his stories, you know, and so when you're kicking out comics, like he is like, I'm not trying to say he or anybody else should should follow my my thoughts on this because if you got your thing going and you're going good, do it, man. Um, and I feel like I, I definitely do. I actually do subscribe to that whole idea of like, you know, if you if you spend like there's that whole like um, what do you call it um, metaphor that story of like the people who who were sent into a room to like do pottery for however many days or whatever and you know one group was told to to do to spend the whole you know say month however long it was making one piece of pottery and make it like the best piece you could ever possibly make you know and and another group was sent in and said don't even focus on making good pottery just make like focus on quantity, like just make as many pieces of pottery as you can possibly make. And, and of course this is kind of beauty is in the eye of the beholder type of thing. But apparently I think this was like an actual test that was done. Apparently the people who made like, um, who made the most, like the quantity first ended up having a lot better you know pieces of pottery like they showed more craftsmanship and more skill and more like appealing elements i guess you know in in their pottery <clears throat> and and the ones who who um who just focused on one piece uh, you know, was not so great, you know, comparatively. So I think that's probably true I, that that's how that works, you know. So I do actually very much prescribe to this idea of quantity kind of trumping, um, trumping a focus on trying to just polish something to a never ending, you know, degree. Um, but I've also seen people do very well with actually um, just taking time to make the best thing they can. So I don't think it's 100% true because I've definitely seen examples going the other way. And I think for me, and I said this in the forum, actually, like, I don't like the term like trying to like find a balance in your life like that idea because I don't think it's even possible. I think it's a kind of silly thing to, to try to seek a balance. You know, I mean, people who've had kids, and I haven't had kids, but I know people who have kids know that you kind of have to, like, embrace the chaos, you know. And I've definitely been in times in my life where I kind of have to embrace the chaos and just try to make do with the resources I have and the time I have you know, so, um, yeah, I don't know, like, you, you can only do what you can do, um, so anyways, um, but as far as, like, striking a balance, I don't know that I, I believe that it's possible, but the point I'm trying to make here is, uh, I, I do feel like in this instance, in the stage of life I'm at, striking a balance is something 
I'd like to do at least when it comes to being too hasty about stuff. So yes, I'd still believe in like quantity, but there's a part of me that's like, slow down a little bit, Marsh. Things don't have to happen today or tomorrow. Like things will happen when they happen. And if you spend the proper amount of time, like the amount of time that this particular project kind of demands and not be too worried about how long it takes, you're going to get there and you're going to be happy and proud with what you've made, you know, and it's going to be the best you could have made at that time. I don't, I'm not talking about being like so precious that you never, you never actually finish anything. Cause that I'm definitely against, you know, but that doesn't mean I have to be so focused on pro producing, you know, something. So I got a few things I can produce now anyways, like from all that work I've done, I can produce it in one, you know, um, print on demand book. So if any of you guys are interested in that, let me know. Um, but I think it doesn't matter. I'm going to, I'm going to make it for me anyways, because I want that book. Like I want to have one book that has most, if not all of the work I've done so far. And I want to be able to look at that book and be like, all right, the next thing I make is going to be next level. And, and I'm going to be able to sort of compare it a little bit, but not only that, but I'm all, I am proud of the work I've made even if it was done in a bit of a haste, you know, I am proud of it, but it's time for, I feel like it's time for me to like do a little better and, and let myself spend a little bit more time and not be too worried about how long it's going to take. Um, I do think that has been a detriment to some of my work where some of the work I've done could have been a little bit stronger if I had only, let myself allowed myself to take a little more time with it and to not be so kind of um worried about how long everything is taking because it's definitely i recognize that as something that sometimes messes me up in a few with a bunch of different things not just um comics necessarily but you know, it certainly has cropped up in, in that as well. So anyways, that's kind of what I'm thinking <laughs> with everything. So hopefully that's helpful to people. Maybe it's, maybe it's worth it. Cause again, like I said, um, say you do only make one comic a year. I mean, unless you're Peter Seckler <laughs> and I'm not trying to make an example of him cause I, I'm, nothing but inspired by, by what Peter and a lot of my peers here are doing, you know, like Joshua Kimball, he takes, he takes his time to make a book and look at the results. Like I was looking through, um, I was looking through, uh, two stories the other day and I'm like, man, this stuff is so well done and it's so inspiring, you know? And then I look at Peter Seckler's stuff and I'm like, man, he is pumping out work and it is so inspiring. There's so many cool, like, like characters and stuff like he's just kicking butt man and i love that too so there's there's different ways to go about it and i'm not again i'm not trying to compare either of these people to each other or to anybody else everybody's got their own way of doing things you know and and it's all valid um but all i'm saying is i'm recognizing this situation for my own self and who knows? Maybe that's maybe that's where some of you are at too. You know, maybe it would help you to think. You know what? If I just put out one good thing in a per year or something like that, you know, that's kind of good. I'm kind of good with that. Like, and imagine that if I actually because I think because I've been too hasty, sometimes I haven't even put one thing out in a year. You know, and that's not good. You know, I feel like I should at least be able to handle one thing a year, you know, <laughs> one comic 
a year. And I'm not saying that I'm going to be shooting for one comic year. I'm just saying like, if it ends up only being one comic year, I'm okay with that now. Whereas before, um, that thinking that way would make me a bit anxious, you know, and that haste would kick in and then I might not even get the one thing out of year because I'm too worried about getting too many other things out of year. I'm too, I'm, I'm too worried of like multitasking or something. And, and, you know, I don't know. One thing a year, one good thing a year is a pretty good rate actually. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I drew this little stupid character too. <laughs> I don't know what this is. It's like, partially maybe a self-portrait i don't know <laughs> it's just so weird um even though my hair doesn't look like that anymore but i do wear that hat <laughs> still those kind of hats so i don't know there's that <laughs> i'm gonna get to the comments and then uh, we'll get going here soon but we're gonna we're gonna see what everybody has to say uh let's see uh Dale says, I'll hit you up in email or Discord. I'll pay for the shipping. Cool, man. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Again, don't forget the community. The link is in the description and also in the chat as of now. So if you're interested in hanging out and, and getting, uh, getting encouraged and excited about making comics and just having some community around you to do that with, go check it out um it's not my discord by the way this is this is not my discord if you <laughs> this is like a community discord it, it's technically i think shell prestos i kind of gave it over to her when it was a discord this is not even a discord it's <laughs> i keep getting that wrong it's a gilded server not discord um but even still it's not my server it's it's everybody's slash it's technically shell prestos um but I'm in there. That's where I'll be hanging out. And if anybody else wants to hang out there, I think it's a great place. We're going to be making some more comics, making probably some more anthologies and everything. And uh, and Peter will be there. And so will many other people. P Empyrean Vol is Peter, if you don't know. Um, he says, we are strictly Cool Ranch, no spice. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Dale says, got to run. Thanks for hanging out with us uh ralph had to go to that's cool if people have to go it's, it's it's totally fine um uh i'll watch the rest in the rewind also going to check out the new gilded site too cool awesome it'll be fun to have you there uh same everybody left at the same time no problem that's all good <laughs> i did a long stream today it went over two hours so i have no i never have any qualms about anybody leaving it's all good so thanks for letting me know that's cool comic book about locusts to go with the music seems like a win-win yeah i mean it's just it's another one of those things like do i have time to make a side locust comic as well as all the other comics i want to make you know i don't know <laughs> so um but maybe one day it'll happen I, i'm glad you like the idea as for a manga go as far as manga goes or manga Sometimes I say manga, sometimes I say manga. I think the proper way is kind of to say manga. I don't know. Drifting Classrooms is my fave. Drifting Classroom. Is it Drifting Class? You're not talking about, um, what's that other one called? Something Classroom. It's, a. Uh, oh, what is it called? Assassination Classroom. That's a that's a cool comic. <laughs> I've only read a little bit and saw a little bit of the manga, um, but what I read and saw was pretty cool. I actually really enjoyed that one. Do you still make mini comic books? I mean, I guess yeah. I don't. I haven't made one any recently. I have a few on sale at my Etsy store, um, which there is a link in the description in the uh, link tree. Uh, that's just my my glyph comics, but. Um, you know, those, I don't think I'm going to be printing anymore for a while of mini comics. Uh, but I'm not saying that there's no more mini comics in my future. You never know. But that's, I, I kind of don't, I want to work on, um, you know, more of the full size comics for a while. In fact, I'd really like to work on like a treasury edition comic, or there's some other ideas that, that we've been kicking around in the, um, in the gilded, uh, server as well. So, uh, yeah, I don't know we'll see we'll see 
I like all I like playing with different formats though. So I, I'm sure I I love mini comics. So I'm sure I wouldn't be surprised if I do more mini comics in the future. Um, do I teach making mini comics? There is a video on my channel that teaches how to make mini comics. Um, it's one of I think it's like my second most popular video. So see if you can look that up. Just Marsh makes comics. How to make a mini comic you know should get you there um yeah jobs are overrated marsh yeah they are right <laughs> this is true joshua i was asking when you brought up shadow of the locust but you then mentioned it's the it's in the show notes yes it's in uh the link tree the, the links are in the link tree um for that as well so, and then there's that corn cob Rob link, <laughs> and then the uh, Gumroad link of all the comics. So, if you want to, guys, want to check that out, you can check that out. Maybe I'll put the links in the description as well, because um, I forgot those even existed. <laughs> cool. I'm going to check out Corn Cob Rob. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for doing that. Uh, making mini comics, pocket kind of mini comic or pocket manga book. Yeah, I mean, I love mini comics. I just, I don't always uh, take, the, you know, it's it takes time and effort to make those. And I, I just want to focus on the larger size stuff for now these days. So we'll see. I'm sure I'll get back to it at some point. Um, I'm liking that blue bolt. Yeah, man. <laughs> that was a fun one to do. Mutt had to leave. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, and thank you. I love your work. Thank you. I love your work too, man. He's been kicking butt on his comic, man. Uh, Hero. Check out Hero. Um, and check out Mutt, man. His Instagram. His He's all over all the social medias, you know, uh, posting cool art as he goes. You know, he's a good artist and he's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and he's also a designer, like graphic designer. So you could hire him for that kind of stuff if you wanted to. Uh Lizard Brain was a fun comic. Definitely well done. Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Josh says, for me, slowing down and taking my time was a huge difference. See? So there you go. It's not it's not the way everybody likes to work, but, you know, jo for Josh, it did work that way. And he's still producing like a, like a freaking madman. Like, you know, he's he's taking his time making comics, but he's producing, you know, and he comes out with a comic once in a while. And so, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, talking about being hasty resonates with me. Then, bam, creative brick wall. I need to show up and do the work on a regular basis and now. Yeah, and, and you know, <clears throat> and not wait for that impulsive burst. That's the thing, too, is like working on it every day, you know, is, is a big helpful thing. And that's something I need to get back to myself. Um, you know, and, and you could take like my, my rule always was like, I can take one day off a week. Um, I'm okay with that, but I can't take two days off a week and I need to do at least like a half an hour a day, or you can make it 15 minutes if you want. But for me, it's always been a half an hour that kind of started with the 100 days of making comics and you know, it's doable. I've done it many times. And if you, you trip up, it, once in a while you might trip up just just get back on the horse the next day you know um and give yourself that one leeway day sometimes i would miss more than one day but as long as you're for the most part you know keeping at it it's good you know and uh it's it's doable half an hour a day we should be able to do that we should be able to find time to do something we love for half an hour a day you know uh so i, I want to get back to that practice myself um, so yeah, Paul Pate was here or is here. Hi, Marshall doing dishes and listening and watching. Yeah. I'm always doing chores when I'm watching these or listening to these streams myself. <laughs> I wish I was drawing. That would be awesome. <laughs> I consider myself to still be in an apprenticeship, a self apprenticeship. The 1000 page quest is what you do before you get serious. So there you go. So maybe, maybe Peter, even Peter will have a time where he's like, okay, I want to slow down. I'm, I did that to learn, you know, and now it's time to put every effort I can into one comic and take a little bit longer time, maybe, or maybe you'll turn out to just have a really fast style and you'll decide, you know what, 
I've actually gotten to the point where I wanted to get. And now I have this awesome work ethic and I'm going to go forth and conquer, you know, um, that might be the case too. You never know. Um, but again, I think both methods and both approaches are valid and all, all approaches in between as well. So Josh, yes, it's a weird balance between perfectionism, which is creatively destructive, which I definitely get into sometimes too. Um, I thought I fully beat it, but I haven't made a lot of comics lately, so maybe I didn't. Um, and sloppy or haphazard, which is pretty destructive. Yeah, they both can be destructive. I, I agree. That's a good point. So let's see. So it's that balance. <laughs> yes. It's why I also take classes a lot. Yeah, I, that's another thing that's really cool is like not only do you get pages out like crazy, but you're also taking classes. You're also doing paintings. I saw you kicking butt with sketch cards not too long ago. Like, you know, you just like never stop, man. And you're filling up sketchbooks like, geez, I wish I I wish I was I, there. There's so like your work. I'm like so jealous of your work ethic sometimes, you know. And, and it, it's just, you got to do the work. You got to put in the time and do the work every day, show up every day. And I know how to do it. I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Josh is an excellent artist. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree. Oh, and the love continues. <laughs> Didi is an awesome artist as well, for sure. <clears throat> Let's see. Marsh, that's the secret sauce. Make the best thing you can with the time and resources you have, and you'll rarely regret it. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that's the case. I think I've kind of done the let's do comics the fast way, and now I'm just in the stage where I'm like, let's let's just try to do my best on the next comic, you know, and, and let it take however much time it needs to take, you know. Uh, so that's where I'm at personally, but everybody's in a different stage and that's all good too. So, all right. So it's gone for two hours and a little over 15 minutes. I did some drawings, showed some sketches. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got something from this. Hopefully it was helpful and, uh, and you know, good luck with your comic endeavors as you go forth. Uh, feel free to check out any of those links if you want. And, uh, yeah, we'll be checking back. It, I, I've been pretty consistent lately with doing a, a video every Tuesday, somewhere around six, uh, uh, five to six, you know, starting at around five to six Eastern. So I think I can safely say that this is going to continue. So every Tuesday <laughs> we'll do a video and sometimes it'll be a live stream. Sometimes it'll be pre-recorded. Who knows? Maybe you'll even get some extra bonus shorts and videos and stuff in between. But uh, yeah, once a week, we're going to do this on Tuesday. Hope you enjoy, and uh, we'll be talking to you again next week. Have a great week, everybody, and thanks for watching.